This is a winter guide for brand new beginners. Winter isn't actually hard, it just hits you all at once and it's overwhelming when you're newer to the game. So let's go through this logically and easily. There are three problems winter requires you to deal with. The cold, deer crops, and food sources running out. All of these are actually extremely easy to deal with but if you're unprepared for all three at once, you're going to die. First things first, you should have built an alchemy engine at your base by now, which is the tier two science machine. To deal with cold, all you need is a thermal stone. Keep that football helmet on at all times still, as it's not worth it to swap it for winter clothing, as almost all damage sources are physical damage. This way you can cover all your bases. People think you need more than a thermal stone because they use it wrong. The thermal stone turning orange does not indicate maximum warmth. The thermal stone shows as orange when you're 30 degrees above ambient temperature. In winter, that's still very, very cold. You need to warm up until you're overheating before you head out. Build two fire pits or just burn two trees that are next to each other to warm up by. When the edge of your screen turns orange, you're good to go. The thermal stone only loses durability when it goes back to neutral temperature. So make certain to keep it warm. If you do let it lose durability though, don't worry. You can repair it fully for one use of a sewing kit, so it's not very expensive if you let it degrade. That's cold dealt with. Let's talk deer clops. Deer clops always spawns on day 30's night in DST, so you have plenty of time to prepare. The most important part for the deer clops fight is having a strong weapon and armor. Armor is easy to get. Hammer a pig house for pigskin and build football helmets while you're next to your alchemy engine. The weapon isn't as easy, we'll go for a hand bat here. A hand bat requires two big meat to build, along with some of that pig skin you got from those pig houses earlier, which is the main issue for new players. We can get this meat easily, though with a little bit of knowledge. Cat coons are the easiest mob to kill for big meat if you can find them in deciduous forest. With an axe, just run up and keep attacking them. They'll die before they even get a chance to attack. They only drop one big meat each, so you'll need to kill two if you use that method. I always base in the desert though, which usually isn't next to the deciduous forest, so I like to use other sources. For newer players, beefalo or qualifant are also pretty easy to kill. They're pretty much the same mob, except the colophant runs away from you. Colophants are found by following tracks. Each track reveals another track in the direction the foot is pointing. After between 6 to 12 tracks, your character will say they found something or something like that. And if you follow the track again, you'll find your beast. There's a chance it will be a Uicus or Varg, but that's very unlikely because the day count's low. If it is a Uicus or Varg, just turn around and leave. They're basically mini bosses and you want a decent weapon if you're gonna fight them. It's just not worth it. Real quick, give that like button and subscribe button a nice little tap on the head that helps me out a lot. Thanks guys. Generally, it will be a colophant though. For us, specifically a winter colophant. Run them into a corner where the land meets water and go in for the hit. Be fast, if you aren't, it might run past you if your angle isn't great. After hitting it, dodge immediately. Then you can go in for 5 hits and run from it until it attacks again. Then go 5 hits again. It's possible to do 7 hits in between if you're perfect with no lag. But lag can be a real nuisance and we want to leave some room for mistakes so we're going with 5. It has 1000 HP so 38 axe hits will kill it and it will drop 8 big meat and the trunk. The trunk is great to eat. If you cook it, it heals a lot and gives a lot of hunger, and this gives us a lot of meat left over. Make certain to at least save 2 big meat in your ice box for deer clops. Big meat will last 15 days in the ice box, so it should be fine for when we need it. It's probably going to take you some time to get it to the ice box though, so keep in mind it'll probably be a little bit less than 15 days. And it doesn't matter if the meat is spoiling for our crafting recipe later, just make certain it doesn't turn into rot. Killing a beefalo is very similar. Instead of hunting its tracks, just find one in a group you want to pick off. Feed it grass and it'll follow you. Have it follow you away from the herd, about 1.5 screens away or more from the next closest beefalo, and go in for the kill. Its attack pattern is exactly the same as colophant, so do the same thing to it. It will drop 4 big meat and some beefalo fur, that's good fuel for the fire. When deer clops is going to spawn, just use two of this meat to make a ham bat. It'll be 100% fresh regardless of how spoiled the meat was. A ham bat's freshness determines how much damage it does. It starts at 59.5 damage a hit with infinite durability and lowers over time to a minimum of 29.75 damage in 10 days 
right before it's about to spoil. We'll also want healing food. Using the crock pot, make five pierogi. The recipe is one vegetable, one meat, one egg, which you can get from feeding meat to a bird you put in a bird cage, and then one filler that isn't twigs on top of that. This will be enough to heal 200 HP, so we'll have plenty of healing. Now, my favorite for vegetables here, which is normally what players are going to struggle with, is going to be cactus. If you are not in the desert, you're going to probably want to go pick some carrots that you haven't yet. With that, make three football helmets, keep your pierogi and ham bat on you, and pre-build a campfire by building it under the light tab and right-clicking instead of left-clicking to place it down to save it for when deer cops spawns. Stay by your base because he cannot spawn right on top of you and you won't have to worry about freezing then or any of these other dangers so you aren't having compounding dangers then. When you see him, immediately run towards him. If he's aggroed on one of your buildings, attack him. You'll likely get hit when aggroing him. Don't worry about it, it's not a big deal. Drag him a bit away through the dark while carrying a lantern or torch and build your campfire. Lure him directly next to the campfire then run in and wail on him. This way he won't freeze you and you can tank him easily with the campfire defrosting you. Watch your health, if it gets below 30, eat your pierogi until you're back to full health, then continue wailing on him. Generally, you shouldn't even need to heal, but things don't always turn out like we plan. Make certain to pick up the deerclops eyeball and the meat, that way other mobs don't eat them. And watch out for shadow creatures. If shadow creatures attack you, don't panic. They have an incredibly small attack range, so they're easy to kite. They have a simple pattern of hit once, dodge once, every time you hit them, they will teleport. So hold down F in case they teleport directly on top of you, which will make them teleport again. If they don't teleport directly on top of you, it will show you which direction they will come from, which is useful since it's the middle of the night. Killing them will restore your sandy and drop nightmare fuel, a very useful magic item. If they attack you during the fight, just keep tank and deer clops. That's gonna be your best bet. You have a lot of margin here with the pierogies and the football helmets you have, so you're gonna be just fine. Don't worry about it. You'll probably wanna restore your sandy to maximum after that. I would cook some cactus or dig up green mushrooms and cook those to restore your sandy. They both heal 15 sandy each. If you're a more advanced player, you can actually just kill them to get your sandy back up to a level you're fine with and just keep going like that. Not a very big deal if you're pretty good at combat. Now, food. Food isn't an issue if you used my recommended base spot, the desert. Cactus regrows even in winter, but if you didn't do that, don't worry, I have a solution. Find a way to get meat. Usually, I like to kill a tier 3 spider nest and transplant the nest to my base, but that's quite a bit of combat. If you want to make that easy and you're not playing like Wendy or something that makes that easy already, what you can do is lure the spiders out, like how I showed you in the last video, and then kill them when it's just a couple of them off the web, and then you can place traps next to the nest when it's out, and when you attack the nest, the traps will go ahead and catch the warrior spiders, and then you can kill it pretty easy. You could also trap rabbits, or whatever else you find that works, and then mine the ice from pangle nests or other ice spawns. Put three ice and whatever meat in the crock pot for meatballs. Meatballs give 62.5 hunger, and a day for a normal character is 75 hunger, so those should be able to cover you for a long time. Meatballs are a pretty great hunger recipe. The issue with not basing in the desert is that you're going to struggle with making that pierogi I talked about earlier though, and restoring your sandy after deer clops. But hey, you could always just hammer down your base and move there if you want to. I would recommend it. Now that the issues are dealt with, let's take advantage of some of those upsides. During winter, Mac Tusk and his crew come out. Two special ice hounds, Wee Mac Tusk who commands the hounds, and Mac Tusk himself. They're actually a formidable force if you don't have gear, but we'll take them out easily. Every world is required to have at least one igloo to spawn these. Generally, you'll find one in a meadow within a forest, and there could be more elsewhere. Don't tell me that you don't have one on your world. That's not true. When you go to fight Mac Tusk, if you found the pan flute that spawns next to the Glomer statue, I recommend you bring it with you for this. I'm assuming you just have an axe here and a football helmet, but if you have a hand bat already, this is going to be super easy. Mac Tusk's hunting crew will slowly follow nearby mobs to begin hunting them, but will not attack immediately unless they get too close. Run up to them and use the pan flute to set them to sleep. Push the ice hounds next to the Mac Tusks and kill one by tanking it. This will freeze the walruses and now you only need to kill one more ice hound. Don't kill it immediately or you will be frozen. Wait 5 seconds, then attack it. You can tank or dodge it and then hit twice and just repeat that. 
After that, position yourself as close as possible to McTusk and wail on him, as he's stun lockable. You don't have a pan flute, just lure them into a high tier spider nest, they'll try to hunt it and die a horrible death, although then you'll lose some of their meat drops later. Now you'll get the hound drops along with the McTusk's amazing drops. He drops two big meat, which is great for making a hand bat if you still need one, has a 50% chance to drop a walrus tusk, which is used for the walking cane, and a 25% chance to drop the tam shanter which is a winter hat that keeps you warm and raises your sandy. A lot of people think the tam shanter is really good. I never use it because it's vastly inferior to always wearing a football helmet, just in terms of saving yourself from surprise combat. The walrus tusk, on the other hand, is used for making the single best item in the game. Also note, the mech tusk hunting crew respawns every 2.5 days. If you didn't receive the drops you wanted, just kill them again. And if you aren't killing the mech tusks in either of the ways I described, keep in mind the hounds are abnormal. They don't act the same way as normal hounds do, and they will stay on target pretty much 100% of the time unless you kill Wee Mech Tusk because he commands them. The walking cane is an item with infinite durability that goes in the primary slot and makes you run 25% faster. This speed stacks additively with any other speed boost such as roads or WX-78's overcharge. It also acts as a permanent weak weapon that deals 17 damage. Speed is super important in DST because it makes it easier to kill enemies, travel faster, and collect items faster, so that's why I regard it as the single best item in the game. It also overcomes the natural speed advantage most monsters have over the player, despite their attacks taking a while to wind up and them mostly not being able to hit you if you keep running, but now you can outrun them. That deer cop's eyeball is also an advantage of winter. Find some skeletons to hammer to gather bone shards and turn it into an eyebrella. Usually those skeletons are easy to find in the desert. The eyebrella is the best water resistant gear in the game. It goes in your head slot and gives 100% rain resistance. It lasts for 9 days of use and can be 20% repaired per use of a sewing kit. Generally, I'll swap between this and my football helmet in spring to avoid freezing to death from the rain. Quick notes about winter. Food rots 25% slower in winter. This compounds with the icebox multiplicatively, so food will last for a long time. Many mobs won't be out in winter, such as butterflies and bees. Farms won't grow in winter, another great reason to never use them, as they are the single worst food source in the entire game. Most other plants grow extremely slowly in winter, to the point where most won't grow another item before the season is over. This does not affect spiky bushes, cacti, or lichen. Night and dusk are very long in winter. For this reason, it is smart to make a lantern to travel through the winter nights easily. It's not good to just sit by your base by the fire all night because then you're going to run out of resources. Also, this will drain your sandy pretty quickly, so if you're trying to stay sane, some cooked cactus will help you out. Torches do not provide heat when held or insulation. If you use it to light objects on fire, they will provide heat though. Now all this won't take close to the entire season. Work on whatever you want to work on for the rest. Also, I generally recommend staying out of the caves during winter due to their lower ambient temperature. If you just need to pop in real quick for some light bulbs out, go for it. Not a very big deal. And that's all. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe for more.